spent some time watching the live streams on Twitter, as well as reviewing a lot of blogs for common questions laced in the comments in order to create this list. This covers some questions on general SEO techniques and some advanced SEO techniques depending on how you look at it. While this is less technical than a lot of the other blog smut out there, I'm certain that many will find this free into examining SEO techniques and general SEO questions to be fun and at times painful. SEO techniques have a way of confusing the hell out of a lot of people, especially upstarts and other online businesses that think they need to go from zero to advanced SEO techniques in 24 hours. My aim is to eliminate that confusion and make it just a little bit worse. These might be common questions for some of you and a little recycled, but when it comes to making an SEO link bait fact, we want to cover as many bases as we can without boring the hell out of you. So without further gilding a lily, here's your damn list. 1. What does SEO stand for? It breaks down to search engine optimization, but we're long past this whole thing being about search engine. It goes much deeper than simple SEO techniques. 2. What is SEO? The old definition had a lot to do with tweaking your site in specific ways in order to draw the attention of search engines, in order to increase placement of your website in the SERPs. Now, now you could better define it as any and every kind of SEO technique that would ensure the conversion of traffic. If you have to club your contacts with a pipe wrench, do it. 3. Is SEO spam, bullshit, dead, etc.? Not likely. Considering major companies are still practicing it, the New York Times, BBC, etc., it's not likely to suddenly disappear. Even the tools who pump their fists and call SEO consults crooks are still optimizing their websites. You can blame SEO for global warming all you like, but uh, Al Gore still offers a bigger package than you, and he's boasting SEO techniques that can make a horse blush. Four. Why aren't we number one or on Google page one? Well, it could be a number of reasons. For starters, your SEO techniques could be completely flawed or non-existent. Included in that could be some terribly written content, or no content at all. Perhaps your site consists mainly of flash or mostly graphics. Did you dump two grand into an Indian-based SEO agency? One of those things that gets you spanked by Google for link spam? If all you wanted was a spanking, there are Russian brides that do that for half the cost. Number five, I'm listed in the top Google spot when I search, but when my wife searches, she says I'm not number one. I don't even rank. Get rid of her. You should always be number one in your wife's book. Either that, or it's a good idea to turn off personalization or log out of Google. Leaving that on and staying logged in will result in Google serving up your favorite dish. There's nothing like having your ego falsely inflated. Oh, Denver Painter, you're so big. You're number one. Number six, when will we see results from all of our advanced SEO techniques? Well, it really depends on the amount of work you put in, what SEO techniques you use, the keywords you're targeting, your on-page copy, your off-site links, and their rank, etc. It can take a while, especially if you're going after competitive keywords. Some keywords might return results in hours or days, others might take years. It depends on how deeply you had your head up your in the sand while you did keyword research. Number seven, can we rank for iPhones? If that's what you're trying to sell, then yeah. You can also rank for breasts, Baby bottles, nipple tassels, tires, ball cocks. That's not where I'm going, leave it alone. The important thing is that you select the appropriate keywords, especially the long tail keywords that give you more targeted results. Of course, you could just go for the really competitive words and dump your entire fortune into two weeks worth of competitive PPC. Let me know how that turns out for you, Mr. Trump. Eight, can we rank for everything, like a massive list of keywords? If you're Amazon.com, the answer is yes. It pays to narrow your target. Think of it like a battle against the Death Star. And yes, Google plays the part of Senator Palpatine. You can't just throw everything you've got at it and expect to keep. You've got to narrow your target, lock onto a single goal and fight. Most of us grew up shooting Womp Rats and a T-16 back home on Tatooine. They're not much bigger than two meters. If you can hit those, you can pack the right targeted keywords. Number nine, how much does SEO cost? This is a question that everyone asks, and no one can really answer, except the man who's peddling the magic elixir. It's really just alcohol. The scope of work will determine how much you pay, but the SEO techniques are worth it if done by a professional agency that knows what they're doing. If you really want to figure, buy. Advanced SEO techniques will cost you somewhere between a dollar and 250,000. Everything below 50% of the estimated cost, plus 350, multiplied by the square root of seven, is probably automated. In case you're wondering, this is one of those times when the answer is not 42. Number 10. 
Why is SEO so expensive? Because there are many skilled people out there who know full well that you need SEO techniques that produce sales. Those people are professionals just like you, and they have gambling habits to sustain Comic-Cons to attend, new stuff to buy, and Farmville families to feed. Most of them, the good ones, spend a lot of time learning what it takes to make other people profitable. That makes them valuable to you. The business they generate and the work they do will more than cover the cost of the optimization. So stop whining and pay the man. Otherwise, he's going to dance on your grave and then register your website when it drops so he has a domain with history for his next project. So how long does it take to get indexed by Google? Google can hit your site anywhere from minutes to days, depending on the SEO techniques you use and what kind of search marketing you're doing. Without any SEO, you can bet it will probably be a few years before Google accidentally trips over your site, then still ignores it because it resembles some form of roadkill, long since dead and decaying from the inside out. Number 12. How would I go about submitting my new site to Google, Yahoo, or Bing? Place your website in a 3x5 envelope, lick the glue line twice, and send it off to them in the mail. While you're waiting for nothing to happen, perform some real SEO on your site, and Google, Yahoo, and Bing, and all the other sites out there will eventually index you based on the links you've established. You can also ping them through blogging, or submit an XML sitemap. If all that is unsuccessful, then they probably don't want anything to do with you and your damn blue widgets. How do I submit to 1,000 search engines? You can pay a ridiculous amount of money to submit your link to a service that submits your link to a service that then submits your link to all the other services that repeat the information that was submitted to the first service. Only inexperienced people do this, so don't do that. You only need to get listed in the major search engines and the rest will fall into place. And for the record, if you didn't catch on with the last question, you don't submit sites anymore. It's better for the search engines to find you naturally, organically, in the wild, and in the buff. It proves you're a man, or a woman. Page number 14. Do I need an XML sitemap? It depends on your site and the purpose for it. If you have a blog with very few pages, or none, then no. A sales letter or a squeeze page? No, unless you're one of those people that get lost in a room with one door. A site with 10 to 20 subpages or more? Probably a good idea. And you should also fire your designer. Number 15. Do I need meta tags for SEO? Yes, and no. Google really doesn't care about your meta. That SEO technique is really 90s. Seriously? Google likes to put most of its weight on links. Other sites like Yahoo still consider meta content and ranking. But who uses Yahoo? Well, a lot of people actually. Meta content is helpful. Use it, just don't abuse it. Ron Jeremy ruined it for the rest of us with Google, so let's not have Yahoo and the others do the same. Number 16. Do I need a high page rank for SEO? Page rank comes from good SEO practices. You really can't have one without the other, at least not for long. Unless, of course, you're some black hat assassin, in that case, more power to you. Even then, it still takes some kind of advanced SEO techniques and long-term SEO in order to build your page rank. Number 17, what is link bait? There's really two sides to this, good and bad. Bad link bait is like a date with a new lover whom, at the end of the night, turns out to be rather filthy and not in a good way. Bad link bait lures the reader in to you through a link with the expectation of one thing. When they arrive at your site, they get something completely different. Good link bait has to do with carefully and masterfully crafted content that draws in the reader with a link to your site. When they get there, they find what they're looking for and word of mouth begins. It's like a good date that ends with coffee in the morning while you try to get your underwear off the ceiling fan. And for the record, I did tell you to stay away from the blind dog bourbon. 